the riskiest part of your retirement. That's what we're going to talk about here today. The riskiest part of your retirement. And I'm going to bust out the PVC pipe of knowledge. We're going to talk about the riskiest part of your retirement with my Make Men Men Again shirt by Officer Jason Tatum. Actually, it's Officer uh, Brandon Tatum. Well, I'm a big fan of Brandon Tatum. He crushes. Uh, make Men Men Again. You know what I'm talking about. All right. So I've been crunching all these numbers using the Craig Israelson Retirement Analyzer Portfolio, uh, which you can get by just going to 712portfolio.com, the number 712portfolio.com. Uh, and you text and you email Craig and say, hey, you know, you're, you've got his portfolio or you want to be interested through me. You say, your old buddy Josh sent me to. That's what you say. Josh sent, sent me to. I don't get paid or anything like that. But then you use my man Dan Daniel Kohlberg's bucket strategy. You can get that at 55e.co. I don't get paid for that either. So if you do it, by all means do so. All right. And then you can, then I've been using right capital. I've been using various standard deviations and returns and whatnot. Very conservative. And every single time, Every single time I've come to the conclusion that there's a certain time frame when your retirement is most at risk, all right? So we're just going to have you at 60 years old and you're going to retire, all right? We're going to have you at 70, 80, and 90. So no matter what happens, no matter what happens, we are good to go until we're about 80 years old, even in the worst case scenarios. Roughly about 80 years old is when things start going south. Now, the worst case scenario is probably happening, but we'll just say 20% of the time, if even that. I don't even think that much. I don't even think that much. I think that if you look, 1966 to 1974, if you retired in 1975, all the way up until basically 1996, maybe 1998, I can't remember, you were fine. All right, so 1966 to 1974 is eight years. From 1966 to basically year 2000, that's 34 years. So that's a, what is that, a, a eight, yeah, it's about a 20%, right? About 20%, something like that. But then even, but that's only for those, those uh, 40, 50 odd years or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? No, not 50 odd years. That's only from those 34 years or so. So we had eight of 34 years were bad, right? And then we have 1931, 1929, 1931. Anything after that, you're fine. So we basically have 12 years and then you can even say, well, 1999 might be bad. So basically, let's just say 15 years of basically 100 years in the markets, essentially, that you were in bad shape if you retired during those 15 years. That means you had 85 years that you're fine. But I'm just gonna even up and say 20% of the time. So we know the average, your port, this is our portfolio value, all right? It's going down because we retired in one of those 20 years. The average, your portfolio value goes up. You're not even gonna have to worry about it. And then of course, if you retired in 1982, you know, you're going to the moon with Neil Buzzy Buzz, and uh, what's his name? Michael Collins. You're going to the moon, baby. Hey, we're in the moon. We broke the Van Allen boat at 25,000 uh, miles an hour. Okay. All right. But anyway, so we're going to concentrate on these 20% of the time. Once you hit 80, that's where it gets dangerous. And we're going to use red now here. 80, because basically, we're still alive. We're still alive. Once we hit 80, we're like, man, what's the likelihood of us keeping our retirement given that we're we're in a world of hurt here because our mark we retired in one of these bad years so the second thing we have to do is how many people actually live beyond uh beyond 20 years of retirement i don't know i'm gonna say 30 percent for simply i'll say yeah say 30 percent for simplicity all right so we have two numbers we have the likelihood that we retire into a bad market is one in five the likelihood that we live beyond 20 years, we'll just say it's one in three. And I, I don't know, you just have to we just have to run with this. So we times those together, 0 0.2 times 0.3, and we get 0.06. All right, so we have a 6% chance that A, we'll retire to a bad market, and a 6% chance we'll live for more than 20 years of retirement. So there's only a 6% chance that we'll, this will be us. We'll even round up to say 10, just for simplicity, 10% which means 90% of the time that wasn't us, all right? Now, we don't really know if that's going to be it. We don't know. We don't know anything. We, we have no clue what the future is. But basically, we have a 90% chance that won't be us based on historical numbers and a 10% chance it could be us, all right? Now, I'm also using Right Capital software where I have low rates of return and high standard deviations. That's not based on, that's kind of based on historical numbers, but it's based on random sequence of events going forward. It's the same story here. So we have a 10% probability that this could be us. And you can even round to 20%, I don't care. What I'm saying is, how do we protect? What do we do to mitigate this right here, this time? Because this is where it gets risky. I'm just telling you, man, I've run all these scenarios on Right Capital using Monte Carlos and all these things. It's always about year 23, starts getting dicey, depending on the markets, year 28 or something like that. 
Generally speaking, between year 23 and 28 is when you're really starting to get crunching. That gets a little bit nerve wracking for sure. Now, again, my right capital, I'm using very low rates of return with very high standard deviations. So we got to do something to mitigate these times right here. And the simple way to do that, and when I'm using my right capital, is you can do an income annuity because an income annuity guarantees you that you will not run out of money. Now, the drawback on an income annuity, as I said a million times there, is there's no cost of living adjustment which is why Social Security is a nice complement to an income annuity because Social Security does have a cost of living adjustment called COLAs. So you get income annuity, gives you a guaranteed fixed rate that you can't outlive. That's just a fact. Another thing, as I talked about yesterday, you get a reverse mortgage line of credit. All right, line of credit. And that is a growing line of credit each and every year uh, in, until you either sell the house or die. It doesn't mean you have to use it. You can carry zero balance on there. But he said, I have this engaged in case this is me right here. So I have this engaged in case it's me, because if it's me and I'm still alive, like my dad died at 76, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, he smoked like a chimney and all that, but he was a very healthy guy. My mom's still alive and kicking. She's 78. You know, will she survive beyond 80? We don't know. We thought last year would probably be it, but you know, probably because she smokes. Well, I don't think she smokes anymore, but anyway, she's not in very good health either. But anyway, the likelihood that she's going to live to 90 is, is just not very high. I mean, so she might live to 81, 82, something like that. You know, I love my mom. I hate for her to die. But to be honest with you, as a Christian, I know at the end of the day, at the end of the day she'll be in a much better place up there than down here. That's just a fact. We, you know, we never, like when I die, I tell my kids, don't mourn for me, man. Don't mourn for me. I'm in with God, man. I am with God. I'm in the best place. You can be sad that you miss me, but don't mourn for me because... I just throw my body out there with the friggin' uh, the wormies and let them compost me and you know plant a fruit tree on top of me. I got no problem with that. I'm up there with a good Lord and Jesus. That's the, no reason. To, oh man, I feel so bad for Josh. Why? No, 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 no. Anyway, so in this case, a reverse mortgage line of credit can grow to uh, to offset some of this. Uh, if we're going down to zero here, we still need some kind of income. So we have to do something to mitigate this time. And reverse mortgage line of credit, a, uh, 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 you can even do a home equity line of credit. I don't care. Reverse mortgage line of credit, an income annuity at some stage. You, you wouldn't want to do it here. You'd want to do it kind of back here. But I also got to point out too, and this is one of my pet peeves about the 4% rule, is when you're running these calculations, you're like, oh man, I need $100,000 a year. Uh, I'm in 82 years old. I only got $500,000 for my portfolio. I need $100,000 a year to live on. You're like, dude, are you really going to take 20% of your portfolio today? Really? No, you're not going to do that. No one's going to do that. You're going to freaking do something to minimize the expenses you have. You're not going to sit there and say, I got 500,000 left in my portfolio, but I need 100%, I need 100,000 to, to follow the 4% rule that I initially in, initiated back when I was 60 years old. You're not going to do that. No one's going to take 20% of their portfolio unless they're dying. I mean, I get that, but and an unknown, like, I only got five years left and it might be the market could go south, but I'm going to stick to that 4% rule. No one does that, dude. Anyway, so this is an issue right here. That is the risk right there that we've got to protect against. And the way, there's a bunch of easy ways to do it. Again, income news are great. Uh, but again, you, you don't know that you're going to need the income annuity necessarily until it might be too late. But that's why I don't overlook income annuities. Don't definitely don't look over reverse mortgage line of credit. It's not to just establish the thing. I mean, it's there, man. You don't have to tap into it. You know, it might cost you 100, 150 bucks a year. It's just insurance. I, I don't understand it. And then, of course, you can obviously spend less money as well. And then you can downsize a million things you could do here. But don't let this tiny likelihood get in the way of you saying, eh, I think I'm still ready to take that, that chance of retiring. Because if we look historically speaking, uh, you're, you're, you've made a better choice by retiring earlier than later. Just You just would the vast majority of time. Now, you don't know what the future holds, but at some point, you just got to bite the bullet and say, I'm jumping. All right. Love your thoughts. Don't forget to fondle. We'll see you guys. God bless.